Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're tackling our brass butt plate issue on this CVA Hawken kit. If you've been watching since the beginning and our first couple videos about this kit, I've made note of an issue we had with our butt plate. The stock itself is not tall enough to accommodate the full casting of this brass, which really wouldn't be a problem except for the interior of this brass casting has uh, you know kind of a border around it and in the toe it has about a quarter to half an inch of full thickness brass casting before the interior of the brass casting gets a lot thinner and i'm trying to show you that some here in the close-up photos here to make this a little bit uh, more apparent to you but today i've enlisted my father as uh, some sage gunsmithing advice here to help us walk through how we can fix this issue get our butt plate straightened up and move forward on this kit. So for the viewers at home, I have my father, my go-to local gunsmith here to diagnose my butt plate issue. And uh, it was a goof on my part. And you can see how far over you are there yeah. as far as the whole spacing inside that butt stock. So we think that I just need to move my hole over about half a hole for a butt plate and we won't be so far off um, on the toe end. So what we're going to do right now is fill this hole with a piece of hard maple and some tight bond, let it sit and dry, and we'll move our hole over after that's done. And we should be in a better position. Um, and if anything, we'll remove a little bit of wood up here to help with this angle change. But then we should be back. Hmm. Ouch closed on me. I wanted to try to get a tight seal. Instead, I just made a mass is all I've done. So That's okay. okay. That's what I do every day. So we're going to just kind of hook some glue down in our hole. wipe that glue off and we can what <laughs> I was just wipe it inside something oh. it doesn't matter what you do with it it's just glue. I thought you were laughing at me <laughs> okay so that let that dry yeah ideally I'd let it dry the key is to make as few mistakes as possible and then get as good at fixing them as you can. Because that's what it all, everything gets down to in craftsmanship is, is how good can you fix a boo-boo when you make one. Because you're going to make one. If you're doing anything, you're going to make mistakes. Cut this off. So let's, uh, let's look at this one and kind of see what we get if we center this up. It's not a lot. Mm -mm. No, it's not much. Thickness of a cereal box. That's probably all it was. I wouldn't go anymore. I'd try it see where you are. Now, in all honesty, you got a gap there, yeah. low. So where where are we rocking at? I don't know. We can probably flex that butt plate that much. Well, you're pretty good on east west. Yeah. Put your top screw back in there once. Okay. And 
just turn it right on over. No. See, yeah, there's just a gap in that casting yeah. underneath there that yeah. you can't do anything about. Huh. The casting doesn't fit that gun. No. And it could not be the casting for it. I mean, it's not like this came out of a box. Okay. So at this stage, we have everything matched up. We know the butt plate isn't going to go anywhere. And I've left our extra wood. I've not removed any wood from the toe of this kit. What we're going to do is we're going to fill this gap at the toe with some epoxy. Now, we could just go through and fill it with epoxy and be done. And, you know, very simply patch this hole. And after filing and sanding, you might notice it if you looked really close. But something that we can do to aid the disguise or the hiding of this gap is we can mix something into our epoxy. And because this is filling where a brass butt plate should be, I'm actually going to file off the casting gate off of another brass butt plate. I'm going to save those shavings and I'm going to mix those brass shavings or filings, however you want to phrase that. I'm going to mix those into the epoxy that we fill this gap with to better hide the gap and give it a little bit of that brass tint. I think it's going to disguise this little gap a little bit and in the end we will take down wood brass butt plate and epoxy all at once so there's a nice even finish across all three surfaces <laughs> We have our shavings. I filed off most of that gate and I think this is going to be enough for us. So I'm going to set these to the side here in kind of a safe spot. We don't want to spill those. That would be a little heartbreaking. Now what we're going to do is kind of based on seeing folks cast a pewter nose cap we're going to use a similar method and create kind of a mold with some paper. We don't need that much. We need that much. I'll fold that over again. We're going to fold this over like this. And this is what we're going to fill with that epoxy. Now I know that epoxy is going to bond to this paper, but like I said, I'm not worried about that because uh, we're going to file it down <laughs> and remove it. So I'm just kind of wiping that down to make sure our tape can bond. And I know this is a pretty hillbilly way to do this, <laughs> um, but it's what we're going to try. Like I said, I don't claim to be a intelligent gunsmith, or really even a gunsmith. I know this will probably raise some cackles, <laughs> as hillbilly as this is, but that's what we've got, and that's what we're going to do. And if you watch folks, uh, you know, like I said, pour a pewter nose cap, you'll see something pretty similar where you're kind of making a form that holds the pewter to the stock so that then you can file it off later. You're not concerned about extra material um, when you're doing something like this. You're only concerned about, it's almost the negative. It's not what you're applying, it's what you're going to be able to take away after you've applied the material and in this case it's an epoxy okay <clears throat> so i'm going to set that up like that it can't really go anywhere and we'll get to mixing our epoxy so i have some jb weld five minute epoxy here and one of my 
shop epoxy boards, which I just used to mix this stuff. I don't quite know how much I'm going to need, but I want to make sure I have enough. So we're going to use quite a bit here. And then we'll sprinkle in our brass. Do about half of it there. Do you think this is going to work? Let me know. Because I too am wondering, is this going to work? It's got a little bit of color just from the reaction that's happening. I'm going to go ahead and pour in the rest of the shavings since we have them. Getting more of it on the paper than I wanted, but I think we're getting enough down in there. Again, this is going to look really ugly when we take it off. But should provide and, and fill that negative space. Got just about all of that off the board. Okay. Just to make sure that we're getting that down in where we want it. It's starting to really firm up. And we don't have any leaks, which is good. So that feels good. It's going to flex it a little bit. Well, the only thing to do now is wait. To help us hold this better while we work on this butt plate, I'm dropping that tang bolt that we picked up from Jim Christie, Deer Creek Products here. Dropping that down and we're gonna hook this up to our trigger plate. Now I haven't looked at this thing since we tried this. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna see how it looked turned out here. Our kind of hillbilly way of doing this. So it looks like we filled everything pretty well. We have kind of this nasty point out here. We'll work on that. I'm gonna go after this extra here with this bench knife. It's just a utility knife basically that stays on the bench just to remove some of that before I get out any of the files or anything. These are just use and abuse knives. So I'm just using that to tear things up. To bring that epoxy down, I'm just coming in with a rough, flat file. I don't know that we had enough brass in our mixture. I don't know that we had enough brass in our epoxy mixture. You can still kind of tell <laughs> that it is epoxy, but we're going to work on bringing this down. And I can see what we have here as we get the plate and the wood kind of matched. We shouldn't see a whole lot of epoxy. Like right now, you can see quite a bit of it there. But uh, as we work this down and we get down to kind of the final state, shouldn't be too much there. Now you can see I'm starting to interact with the rest of the stock. So I want to make sure that I'm coming back with my file here and I'm coming into that stock. Just so we have a nice even transition across these planes. So after a couple minutes filing here, we're down to really getting into where we're cleaning this up. You can see the amount of epoxy there is really going down. I really didn't need as much as I put in the entire mixture, but I really wanted to be sure that I had enough in there and I was filling that gap.
coming back through the stock here just a little bit to even this out. Just like that. Now I think we can come in with a little bit of a finer file now that we're straightened up and that we're in line with everything and we can start to really refine this get this butt plate brought down a little bit and make sure we we head towards our hardware cleanup Now that we have that lined up, we can come in underneath our cheek piece here and really work this bulky area back in here as we get up towards the wrist. And I think to do that, I'm gonna jump into a pretty coarse half round, about like this guy. Let's see if I can come in here. Not quite. A little tricky getting in there. I'm using this round file to come in here through the back and work that ridge down that we had underneath that cheek rest. With that round, I can work my way literally up into that cheek piece without uh, damaging it a whole lot because we use this same file to establish that cheek rest. So if I run into it, I don't really do a whole lot uh, damage wise to it. And that pretty well covers the back end of that ridge that we had going there. Make sure that we don't damage that curve. Thinking back on it here, I probably uh, should not have worked that uh, cheek rest so much with that ridge in there. I was so worried about that ridge and that butt plate, but right now I'm working and having to go around kind of my close to finish work on this cheek rest without damaging it. So I'm just going slow and, and changing the position of the stock and the vise as I'm going. And really coming at it at different angles here is doing well for us. So I jumped to this pretty coarse rasp to really try to get that removed quickly. And now I'm just smoothing that area out a little bit. I don't know. Might not be the best way to go about it, but it cleaned it up real quick, and that's really what I wanted. So I'm coming back in with that same round now. And I'm following the line of that cheek piece like this, and then going out at kind of a left angle. to blend these spaces that we've been working on here. So with this forward direction, I'm cleaning up and reestablishing underneath that cheek rest. And then with the forward left motion, I'm smoothing out the transition from underneath the cheek piece down and around the stock here.
just using that fine to come in there and work that area a little bit. Okay. And really, for me, this is just a lot about feel. There we go. And I feel good about that, where that's at. Now I'm coming in with this big flat, pretty fine. And we're gonna work this butt plate region here just a little bit more. We have some ridges on the underside I wanna take care of. And you'll see here, it might be a little, oh. Now what I wanna do is take this fine flat file here and I wanna clean up the butt plate. You can see here a little bit, some different facets in there from what we were doing earlier. And I wanna make sure or make that a little bit smoother, a little bit straighter. I don't want all those ridges in there when I can keep from it. And I'm still feeling some gnarly stuff up in here I really want to take care of. Looking at it from the side here right now, a little bit of a bump in that butt plate at its toe. So I just want to work that down, which we're at. Okay, so that's pretty good for where we're at here on our woodworking and that butt plate.